Welcome everybody um, to Midweek Experiments in Faithfulness. This is a weekly facilitated spiritual practice with a Quaker flavor and an experimental ethos. My name is Lahari Indraganti and I'm a program fellow here at Beacon Hill Friends House, which is a Quaker center for learning and action in a residential community of about 20 people who live according to Quaker values. Tonight, I'm delighted to introduce you to Allison Connolly, but Connolly Better and Becca Marin Anderson with the practice Engaging Our Bodies with Disability Wisdom. Disability is, but is not only a unique identity and experience. Disability is also a site of brilliance and ritual, which can open all of us to the wisdom of our own body minds. Join Allison Becca to engage one of Allison Becca's musical meditations and to participate in a shared Lectio Divina practice on Becca's poem, The Body of God. Come sit with disability and crip community and learning into the wisdom of your own on-purpose embodiment. Now I'm excited to introduce you to Allison and Becca. Becca Marin Anderson, she, her, is a queer disabled writer and theologian. She earned her Master of Divinity from Union Theological Seminary and serves as Director of Pastoral Care and Community Connections for Julian Way, a disability ministry organization. She's a member of the United Church of Christ Disabilities Ministries Board, and co-convener of the Disability Theology Discussion Group. She frequently, she can frequently be found playing Dungeons and Dragons or entertaining her cat, Jasmine. <laughs> Allison Connolly Better, she, her, holds a Master of Divinity from Union Theological Seminary with a concentration in disability theology. She currently serves as Interim Director for Children, Youth, and Family Ministries at First Universal Universalist Church of Minneapolis and as co-chair of the United Church of Christ Disabilities Ministries Board. Allison is queer and disabled and is a belonger in both Catholic and UCC communities. Allison and her spouse live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Again, welcome. We're really glad you've joined us tonight, Allison and Becca. It's all yours. Thanks so much, Lahari. It's really good to be here. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start screen sharing our uh, slides that we have for tonight. I'll describe this slide. It's a black and blue and white slide. The language on the slide in white text says, engaging our bodies with disability wisdom, Becca Marn Anderson, MDiv, and Allison Conley, better MDiv. And I will commit to always reading all the words that are on the slides. We'll give an overview of our time together. We'll introduce ourselves, uh, which Lahadi has already really done for us. We'll sing a song that I wrote called A World Which Loves Us Back. Spend some time meditating on that. We'll do some wondering together, why disability wisdom and why for all of us. We'll reflect on a poem prayer that Becca wrote called The Body of God. We'll engage that through a practice called Lexio Divina. And then we'll do some integrating, sharing back and debriefing before some closing remarks from Lahari. So just to continue introducing ourselves, uh, Beck and I have worked together for a long time doing disability theology and ministry exactly like this. We are uh, beloved co-conspirators and uh, really enjoy getting to do this work together. We studied together at Union Theological Seminary and both have done work uh, before that and since then on disability theology. Becca, anything you'd like to add about, about yourself and your context, how you come here? I, I guess I'll, I'll just name uh, specifically, because uh, I, I don't think we did in our bios, uh, we both identify as disabled uh, and uh, spend a lot of our time in uh, disability communities. And um, so uh, really draw uh, our our knowledge um, from both our personal experience and uh, the wisdom of our communities. That's right. We don't come here on our own. We come surrounded by all the disabled folks who formed us. Mm -hmm. In that vein, I'd like us to participate in this song, uh, Embodied Practice Together, participating in this song that I wrote called A World, A World Which Loves Us Back. And I wrote this song, and it's dedicated to the Disability Theology Discussion Group, which is a spiritual reflection space by and for disabled folks that Becca and I co-founded and co-facilitate, along with Greg, who's here, is also a leader in this group. Um, this is a spiritual reflection space by and for disabled folks to process our own experiences with spirituality and embodiment and disability and um, all the all the beautiful and all the challenging that comes along with that. And this song is really a love letter to that group with all, all of the, the mix of emotions and complexity 
that comes with being a group of disabled people processing our spirituality in this world that is not made for so many of us and which does not love so many of us. It's a very repetitive song. So this is, a, a, as I would tell with my camp kids, I'd say, this is a catch on song. And you would say, this is a catch on song. So this is a catch on song. I'll sing it through. There are five verses. They follow the same format. They each repeat. So you'll have 10, 10 opportunities to learn the verse to the song. And then the chorus is the same. So I encourage you on mute to sing along with me as you pick it up. This is called A World Which Loves Us Back. Notice where this song is resonating in your body. Is it in your chest, in your vocal cords? Do you feel it in the airflow? Are you tapping your feet? Are you clapping your hands? How is this moving in you? We rage, we rage, we rage from age to age. For justice long delay, we rage again. We rage, we rage, we rage from age to age. For justice long delayed, we rage. We long for lives worth living with abundance without lack. A world where all are thriving, a world which loves us back. We mourn, we mourn for those whose lives are torn. Weary, weary, we mourn again. We, we mourn for those whose lives are torn. Weary, weary, we long for life. Worth living with abundance without lack. A world which is thriving, a world which loves us back. We crawl, we crawl to tear down everyone from here to city hall. We crawl, we crawl, we crawl to tear down everyone. From here to City Hall, we crawl. We long for worth living with abundance without lack. A world thriving, a world which loves us back. We dance, we dance with those who took a chance. A righteous, risky stance, we dance. We dance, we dance with those who took a chance. A righteous, risky stance, we dance. We long for a life worth living with abundance without lack. A world worth living, a world which loves us back. We play, we play, we play from day to day. Our freedom's here to stay. We play, we play, we play, we play from day to day. Our freedom's here to stay. We play, we long for worth living with abundance without pain. Oh, we're thriving. Oh, world which loves us back. Let's sing that chorus the last time. We long for lives worth living with abundance without lack. Oh, world thriving. Oh, world which loves us back. So next thing that uh, we want to do together is uh, talk a little bit about um, why disability wisdom, what, uh, what this is, um, how we incorporate it into spiritual practice, and why we are inviting you uh, to participate in these spiritual practices today. Um, so I would say kind of the, the overarching, uh, you know, what, what this spiritual practice that we are offering tonight is, is any form of spiritual practice or ritual that incorporates disability wisdom, that incorporates the knowledge and insights and experiences of disabled body minds. Um, and so that is, uh, particularly music or meditations or prayers or rituals created by 
people with disabilities um, about uh, our experiences. And so the the question then becomes, uh, you know, what what makes these uh, practices uh, special? What what is the the reason? Um, to engage in them, and especially for people who don't identify as disabled, what's, what's in this for, for y'all? Um, and so to that, uh, I would say that one of the things is uh, disability wisdom engages our bodies. Um, it is a, a very embodied way of knowing uh, in the way that Allison, when introducing that song, invited you to notice where you experience it in your bodies. Um, disability wisdom, uh, spiritual practices, understand that that embodied knowledge is a real and valid form of knowledge in a way that other spiritual practices can, but uh, many do not. Um, these practices also remind us of the beauty and diversity uh, in the world, especially in our bodies and minds. They are ones um, that uh, take very seriously that uh, humans can be very different from one another. Um, their, their bodies can have different abilities and disabilities. Their minds can work in so very many different ways and approaches this as a form of diversity and something that is beautiful and wonderful um, and, and worthy of awe and, and notice, even as some of those limitations can also be sites of pain and, and things that, uh, that we struggle with. The overall uh, diversity of it uh, is, is beautiful. And then uh, another thing that these practices encourage is uh, to think of all of our body minds as sacred. Um, to remember that uh, whoever we are and, and whatever abilities and disabilities we have uh, and, and every other part of our identity as well, that this is, uh, we, we are holy. Our, our bodies and minds are part of a, a great uh, universe. Um, in, in Christian tradition, um, there uh, we are, and so uh, in Jewish tradition as well, um, we we learn in Genesis that God created humankind in God's own image, um, and disability wisdom takes that very seriously to say all of us, everybody, um, and disability wisdom uh, reminds us that if if all bodies are created in the image of the divine, then that means that we all have gifts that, that need to be honored. We all um, have something within us uh, that we, we need to pay attention to. Um, and especially, even and especially when those are gifts that society does not value, um, which is often true of, of disability. Um, so spiritual practices of disability wisdom are about uplifting those gifts and, and uh, honoring the experiences that a diversity of body and minds have. Um, and this is valuable to all of us, whether we identify as disabled or not, because we all have uh, embodied experiences uh, and we all at times may struggle with those embodied experiences. And we all may have gifts that are not quite what society uh, values and, and expects from us. And so engaging with disability wisdom opens up new possibilities for us to connect to our own body minds and to think about the body minds of all of those around us. So with that said, um, what we're going to do with the rest of our practice time tonight is we will be engaging in the practice of Lexio Divina um, with a piece I wrote uh, called The Body of God. Uh, and Allison will tell us a bit more about Lexio Divina and what we're going to do together. Thanks so much, Becca. On the screen, I've started sharing again, and I have a slide uh, that gives an overview of Lexio Divina on the Body of God by Becca Marn Anderson and Div. The process of Lexio Divina that we'll use tonight, Becca and I were talking, there are a million ways to use Lexio Divina. It's a very old practice. Uh, emerging from Christian monastic traditions and uh, spreading far and wide to 2023. Here's how we'll do it together tonight. 
Becca will read the poem, The First Time, The Body of God. And then we're going to pause for first silent reflection. And that's also where we're going to pause the recording. So nothing after that will be recorded. I'll read the poem a second time. Same poem, same words. Now I invite you to share aloud or in the chat a word or a phrase that's jumping out to you from the poem. And if you share it in the chat, I'll read it aloud for accessibility purposes. And then after our third read, Becca will read it for a third time once everyone who wants to share has had a chance to share. Becca will read it for a third time and then we'll have a little bit more space for discussion. What is sticking with you? Why do you think that word or phrase kind of grabbed you, caught you, um, is, is clinging to, to your mind and spirit? Um, or what is a call that you feel, a call that you feel uh, to make a change in your life or in your mindset or in the way you see the world? that's emerging from this word or phrase or from this larger text. So this is a piece that I first wrote uh, in March of 2018 um, for a uh, one of my first workshops about disability theology, I think. Um, and it has been edited several times since uh, as I um, interact with uh, more disabled people, more disability community, and uh, find new ways to uh, incorporate uh, what I learned from them into this piece. Um, and uh, most simply, it is uh, my imagining of uh, what it means um, if we are all created in the image of God. Um, that means that God the way that God operates uh, or the way that, that God appears has similarities uh, to us, to the diversity of all of us. And so this is uh, some of my imagining of what that looks and feels like. If you can close your eyes, if it feels comfortable to do so. And I invite you to imagine the body of God. Imagine it with all the genders and races and physical descriptions of the world. God is male and female and both and neither and all. God is black and brown and olive and tan. God has hair in long braids, wrinkled face, flat nose, small eyes, full beard, curvy body, long arms, short legs. God wears flowing dresses and blue jeans and saris and turbans and tuxedos and lots and lots of jewelry. God has tattoos of every animal of the world and a single heart-shaped stud in their right ear. And God has every ability and every disability in the world. God walks, God limps, God rolls, God crawls. God gets where God needs to be, gets to us however God can. God's mind works with the speed and sometimes the randomness of ADHD. God feels pain with the depths of depression and energy like an episode of mania. God hears voices, the voices of all people and all living things. God has no one way of solving problems. Sometimes God moves from step to step with the most analytic of minds. Sometimes God makes great intuitive leaps that cannot be explained. Sometimes God gets stuck in a loop because the present, whether good or bad, is the time where God lives. God paints with their feet and reads with their hands. God can dance by swaying and shuffling and sing by making noises that are not words but express emotions that words cannot. God is too busy reaching out to us to be concerned that they cannot see. 
God is too busy feeling the rhythms of music in their bones to worry about what it sounds like. God is too busy loving, loving with all God's arrhythmic heart to be anything but grateful for the body they have. Is it any wonder that we have trouble grasping God when God's body does not move the way we expect a body to move? Is it any wonder we have trouble understanding God when God speaks with the slurred words of cerebral palsy? Is it any wonder that we cannot comprehend God who bears the chronic pain of the suffering of the world? How can we come closer to this being beyond our comprehension? this body-mind that meets none of our expectations by freeing ourselves of expectations, by searching for God in the unique body-minds of our fellow human beings, by seeking to understand that which challenges us and confuses us and frightens us, by accepting ourselves and the body-minds that make us who we are. When we pray that all of this may be so, when we pray to love all bodies and minds, when we pray to be both broken and whole at once, we are praying to be more like God. Let those words sit with you in a moment of silence. already the recording will end here 